Carbohydrates. This is Jack Brook from Columbia Gorge Community College. In this session, what I'd like to do is just um, emphasize some of the health aspects of carbohydrates and look at their relationship to increasing risk of health or decreasing risk of health issues. Um, there are three main types of carbohydrates. There's monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. I'm going to include another grouping called an oligosaccharide. And because of its relationship to uh, health, and so we'll be discussing that as a separate issue. Some nutritionists may put oligosaccharides under the polysaccharide heading, but I'm going to isolate it just because it um, is important in reducing risk of some health problems. Uh, monosaccharides, mono means one, and saccharides means sugars. So it's a one sugar unit. Uh, disaccharide, you, you put two monosaccharides together to get a disaccharide. And then polysaccharides, poly means many. And so you'd have upwards of hundreds of uh, monosaccharide units that could make up a polysaccharide. Oligo means few, so an oligosaccharide would have a few sugars. In it. Uh, I'm going to put uh, monosaccharides and disaccharides both under the heading of simple sugars. There may be some nutritionists who do not put disaccharides under the heading of a simple, but especially when we look at sucrose, which is a table sugar, you know, the common white table sugar you have at home, it's definitely a food additive that would come under the heading of a simple sugar. So uh, these are the six types of simple sugars and um, they do have a direct relationship to health if we get too many of them, as we're going to see. Uh, main food sources, we get a lot of sucrose from sugar cane or beet sugar. Um, honey, we have glucose and fructose, and honey's a lot sweeter than regular sucrose, which is our common table sugar, mainly because it's uh, considered to be a set of inver invert sugars, and so that means some of the glucose and fructose are free from each other, which allows uh, honey to be a lot sweeter than our table sugar because fructose by itself is a lot sweeter. So when you have it free in the honey, then it, uh, our taste buds would uh, detect that as being a lot sweeter. And then lactose you only find in milk. And then you've heard a lot of... Uh, about high fructose corn syrup and soda pops and cookies and other food products. Um, good things and bad things about high fruit. I think it's still up in the air whether it's good or bad, but maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, so some of the main health relationships of simple sugars would be uh, pretty much they're empty calories, uh, empty calories leading to obesity, which has a relationship to heart disease, to diabetes, to osteoporosis, to cancers. So indirectly, simple sugars, you know, they don't cause these things, but indirectly, if, if you get obese from eating too much sugar, uh, which is becoming a concern, um, used to be fat was a main focus, now sugar has become more and more of a focus because they're replacing fat with high sugary foods uh, to make them taste better for us. And then we'll talk more about metabolic syndrome when we get into diabetes and heart disease, but we do, uh, simple sugars will increase the risk of developing metabolic syndrome. And then as we've known for a long time, uh, cavities are caused by sugars, and especially the hard candies and stuff getting in your in your teeth. So those are the main health relationships um, of simple sugars. So it's kind of an indirect relationship, but because sugar is so such a high component in our diet, it's become more and more evident as a, as a problem. Oligosaccharides, as I mentioned, oligo means a few, and basically by a few we mean anywhere from three to ten monosaccharides in a chain. I've just given you a couple types of oligosaccharides. Uh, and showing you what sugars would be part of their structure. We also talked about FOS when we were talking about functional foods, and that would be under the heading of an oligosaccharide also. Um, main food sources, uh, as we talked about with the uh, probiotics and prebiotics, then um, we have legumes and anything that's gassy. As you know, the probiotics is when you have beneficial bacteria um, 
growing in your intestines and so these these foods would uh, encourage the growth of these bacteria and uh, increasing the health aspects of uh, these functional foods. Uh, oligosaccharides have also been shown to increase calcium absorption uh, and, and uh, also reducing the amount of cholesterol uh, that we get in foods that gets into our intestines because it kind of binds onto it and takes it out in uh, our waste. So a lot of good important health aspects to oligosaccharides. Uh, they only come uh, mainly from plants and so another benefit of eating plants are the oligosaccharides for increasing in a kind of a preventative health issue. Polysaccharides are um, glucose units. So polysaccharides are mainly you know, the ones that are important for us in our discussion are totally made of glucose units. Uh, and they're, but they're greater than 10 monosaccharides long. Uh, I'm going to separate the polysaccharides into two types. We have the storage polysaccharides are the ones that are going to be stored as a future energy source. And then structural polysaccharides that uh, would be only in plants and they would be part of the plant cell wall. So you would not find structural polysaccharides in animals. Um, or human beings. So the two storage polysaccharides would be the starch and the glycogen and then the two that we're going to talk about are actually the three structural will be cellulose, pectins, and gums. So starch is an energy storage uh, form for plants um, and they will store that uh, for as a future energy source as they drop or they they break down in the ground that they can uh, the new plants can utilize the the sugars from those as an, as an energy source. But as you know, bread and uh, pasta, potatoes, you know, the rice, those kinds of things are very high in starches. The structure at the bottom just shows you that it is a chain. Uh, it is a polysaccharide, so it, is a, it has many sugars. And I just like to point out, not that you need to have a background in chemistry, but you can see the sugars are connected together, and you can see kind of the the V-shaped um, structure here, where it, it's connected with an oxygen to the next sugar. And as you can see, this is considered to be a glycosidic linkage. The reason it's called 1,4 because this is the first carbon of this sugar. This is the fourth carbon of the other sugar. And this shape is called an alpha shape, and so they just called it an alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage. We'll come back and look at this a little bit later when we uh, start looking at um, cellulose, which has a different kind of linkage, which makes it not digestible. But starch is totally digestible. Uh, by digestion, what we mean is we are going to sever this bond between the sugars and release the sugars uh, as free sugars that can be absorbed in your intestinal system. Glycogen, very similar to starch. It's found in animals as a storage form, found mainly in the muscles. The glycogen in the muscles is going to be used as a future energy source for making ATP for muscle contraction. So what happens is when you need that to make that ATP, uh, your cells can break these sugars apart and you know break the bond between them, release those sugars, and within the cell cytoplasm and the mitochondria, you can then make ATP out of the sugars. The liver glycogen is going to be uh, used to maintain the homeostasis of blood sugar levels. And so when your blood sugar levels get too low, then the liver can break off sugar units and put them into the blood, raise the blood sugar to maintain the balance or the proper uh, sugar level or what you would call the homeostasis of blood glucose levels uh, in your blood system. Uh, you, Some of you that are athletes may have heard of carbohydrate loading. Basically, carbohydrate loading is eating, you know, lots of carbohydrates to increase your storage of glycogen. And glycogen is necessary to burn fat, or actually sugars are necessary to burn fat. And so the more glycogen you have, the more 
um, you have to use to burn that fat in a long distance run or a long term activity. If you run out of glycogen, then it uh, makes it very difficult to burn fat. One of the this would be one of the aspects of hitting the wall. So you want to make sure you have adequate glycogen stores to run that marathon. And so we refer to that as carbohydrate uh, loading, but it's actually glycogen storage. You know, and <clears throat> um, as you can see, the structures of uh, the amylose and amylopectin are both starch structures. And here's the glycogen. You can see amylopectin and glycogen uh, look very similar. Uh, they both have branch, so these are sugar branches. But you can see the glycogen has a lot more branches than the amylopectin. I think they say amylopectin is about one every 25th sugar and glycogen one every 12th. So glycogen is a more condensed storage form of carbohydrate, um, and uh, which is important for maintaining that energy storage for the future. Cellulose. Now, these these would be the structural carbohydrates. Um, cellulose is an insoluble fiber. You find a lot of cellulose, as I mentioned, in plants. But uh, things that would be very strong, cellulose is going to give strength to the plants uh, as part of its cell wall structure. So cotton, as you know, is very strong. Grass is very tough. Uh, vegetables, grains, especially wheat grains, are going to have a lot of cellulose in them. Um, and uh, cellulose is not digestible by humans, and I'll show you why in just a second. And it's not soluble in water, meaning that if you put cellulose in water, it would be similar to putting a wire, you know, just a metal wire in water. It doesn't absorb the water. It doesn't break down in water. It doesn't really have a relationship with water. So it's more like roughage in your diet. It's going to keep you regular. And we'll talk, uh, at the very end of this section, we'll talk about more of the health aspects of, of uh, structural uh, fibers. So insoluble fiber is one type of fiber, and cellulose is an example of that. And this, this um, slide is just showing you that uh, cellulose comes from plants. And so you can see these fibers are just uh, these diamond state straight. These diamond shaped structures are the glucose units. And so fiber is just a long chain of glucoses. Um, but as you know, they're not sweet. It's just because of their uh, chemical uh, structure and bonding that your taste buds don't perceive them as being sweet, even though they are glucose units. Uh, and here I've just highlighted in the red uh, where you can see this is a plant cell wall, and you can see these yellow structures are basically the crisscrossing of cellulose, which would give it a very strong, fibrous kind of um, ability. Uh, and then just showing you, uh, you know, as I mentioned, starch is, is digestible, so we can eat bread and we can digest and get the energy from it, but cellulose is not. And the basic reason is, uh, and as you get into more chemistry and biology, you'll see that uh, structures, chemical structures are very uh, it doesn't take much for them to be completely different. As I mentioned, um, the, the linkage between the sugars in a starch is an alpha-1,4 linkage. And we have the enzymes to break these sugars apart so we can separate the sugars. Whereas in cellulose, it's a beta-1,4 linkage. And you can see it's straight versus the V-shaped linkage here. And the straight shape of um, this bond uh, makes it so we cannot break this apart. We cannot separate these sugars. We do not have the enzyme that is able to you know, be kind of like a scissors and cut this bond so you separate the sugars. So they stay intact as they go through your digestive system. And... Uh, that's why they're considered non-digestible, but they stay intact, they will increase bulk, and they will increase your, uh, uh, basically, um, increase the bulk of your, your waste product and allow you to eliminate your waste faster, and that's going to be a very healthy thing 
and keep uh, intestinal health intact. So that's the reason that you know if you ate cotton or grass or something, you'd basically die because we cannot separate the sugars. Now animals like cows can eat grass and live because they basically have bacteria in their one their, their stomach. You know they have four stomachs, so one of the stomachs has the bacteria. The bacteria is able to break that bond, and so then uh, the cow can you know get the cud back up and, and basically swallow it again and, and be able to utilize the sugars from the grass and stuff. Uh, pectin and gums are a type or types of soluble fiber and soluble fiber you find a lot of pectins and gums in fruits uh, and uh, oats have a lot of gums and, and that kind of thing. Also barley has a lot of that but um, and legumes would also have a lot of soluble fiber in them, and these are the beans. But um, they have a property of uh, absorbing water and forming a gel and actually getting bigger. Some of you that do some uh, making of jams and jellies, you know, you add pectin. Um, and you add pectin to that slurry. And what pectin does is absorb the water and become a gel. And so that's what allows us to have jams and jelly. And then gums, you'll find a lot of gums put into low-fat foods like uh, low-fat ice creams. If you look at the ingredient list, you might see guar gum or xanthan um, gum or locust bean gum. Uh, and they're basically thickeners because if you take the fat out of ice cream, say, it doesn't have that mouth feel. It doesn't have the thickness feel. Um, that you get with the fat. So if you add pectins and gums, they kind of get that artificial thickness feel in your mouth. It makes it more enjoyable and more like ice cream. And they're also fermentable by bacteria, so in some sense they can uh, ferment and cause some gas, but nothing like oligosaccharides um, from that. But um, So anyway, we'll talk about the health aspects in a minute. Uh, but here I've uh, highlighted pectin, and you can see it's the green thing. It kind of keeps everything together, uh, and it doesn't really add strength to the cell wall, but it adds flexibility to the cell wall. It allows growth of the cell without everything kind of breaking apart. So you can see it's kind of connecting everything together um, and kind of flexible kind of issue. So, so again... Um, Cellulose, pectins, all the fibers are part of a cell wall of plants, so you will not find them in animals. Um, that's why you can't eat meat to get fiber. You have to eat plant products, and I've tried to emphasize in other uh, sessions how important plants are in your diet. As far as the recommendations for carbohydrates, they recommend anywhere from 250 to 300 grams a day. So that's upwards of 58 to 60 percent of your diet should be carbohydrates. Uh, and when, uh, as, as part of that, you know, only 10 percent should be from simple sugars. And then the rest should be from the complex uh, carbohydrates. Um, and, or natural sugars also part of that. As far as the fiber is concerned, um, the um, uh, the main um, recommendation is 14 grams for every thousand calories that you eat. So again, if you ate a 2,000 calorie diet, it'd be about 28 grams. Some of you, when you do your diet studies, are going to find that you may eat 2,000, 2,500 grams, but you only get 14 grams of fiber. So you, were, as America, we're getting about half of the amount of fiber that we need. The American Dietetic Association gives a blanket recommendation, no matter how much you eat, it's between 25 and 35 grams per day. So it's a little bit higher um, expectation from the Dietetic Association, but um, probably a good recommendation. Um, they also, there is a recommendation out there that uh, if, unless you have a health problem, for example, if you have a problem with constipation and stuff like that, you would want to have a lot of insoluble fiber to keep you regular. Uh, and if you wanted to reduce 
cholesterol. We would say to increase your soluble fiber. Um, and for cancer, increase insoluble fiber, those kinds of things. But if you do not have a specific health problem, the rule of thumb is three insoluble fiber servings for every one soluble fiber serving that you eat. So that's kind of a rule of thumb. But uh, again, if you have a specific issue of heart disease or cancer, or, you know, diverticulitis or something like that, then that ratio doesn't fit you but that's just kind of a blanket uh, rule of thumb. There is such a thing as getting too much fiber. Uh, there, uh, you can, you know, in nutrition, you can get too much of a good thing. Uh, and so there is a recommendation not to get more than 60 grams of fiber per day. And so that'd be double of what the, the higher recommendation of the American Dietetic Association anyway because you can get a fiber ball, which is called a phytobezoar, and it, it can cause a blockage. And as you can see, the only way to remove that blockage is surgically. So you don't want to go crazy. Uh, it's, it would be very difficult to eat enough high fiber foods to get a phytobezoar. Mainly it comes from supplements because people basically are, you know, that's the same thing with vitamins and minerals and everything else. Um, they think if you triple the amount that you're supposed to take, you're going to get triple the benefit. Well, no, it can be a hazardous to triple the amount. So if um, and the recommendation is 30 and you take 60, the chances you are taking with the risk of a phytobezoar and having surgery to remove that because it really blocks up your system. So if you follow the rules of thumb and uh, just follow recommendations, you should be fine. Our problem in this country is not getting enough, but you don't want to go nuts and eat three times the recommendations because it can be a problem. This is a chart that I'd uh, for students of uh, Columbia Gorge in, in the nutrition class, I'd like you to really uh, not really memorize. I, mean, I want you to know it. We're going to use this in our diet study, uh, these recommendations. And so um, looking at the, it's kind of separated into water-soluble uh, fibers and water-insoluble. And you can see gums and pectin, cellulose. We didn't talk about lignans, but you find a lot of lignans in broccoli and things like that. But um, as you can see, water-soluble fibers, mostly fruits, oats, and legumes, water-insoluble vegetable, wheat, and other grain. Other grains would be like rice, you know, the whole grain rice and stuff. I might mention that, you know, white bread and white rice, uh, really, you do not get any fiber out of those. You need to make sure you're getting 100% whole wheat bread. Please don't be um, uh, suckered into buying uh, bread that's brown color and it says wheat bread. All bread's made out of wheat unless it's a rye or something. And so the brown is a coloring and it's just like white bread. You need to look on the ingredients or on the label and it has to say 100% whole wheat. Even the seven grain breads, if you look at it, it's uh, processed uh, wheat, you know, that has been enriched. So even though it says seven grains, it's just white bread with a few grains thrown in there. It needs to be 100% whole wheat. Okay? And then grains, you need to have the brown rice. It has the um, uh, hole on it or the shell on it that has the fiber in it. In white uh, rice, they take that out. And so all you're getting is the starch. Um, and the same with wheat, uh, you know, bread that's white, you're or wheat bread that's not 100%, you're just getting the starch. So to get the fiber, you have to have whole grains and whole wheat. And vegetables with the skin, okay? Fruits with the skin. And then oats and that kind of thing. Uh, legumes are very important. See, legumes are very important. Not only you get the water-soluble, but you get... Um, oligosaccharides and you get phytochemicals so beans are a very very good food 
um, if you can get past the gas, then, then it's a very, very good food. Um, now, water-soluble fibers, what are their health benefits? A glycemic effect basically means how fast sugar gets into your blood and it can reduce how fast sugar gets into your blood so it can reduce that big blast of sugar that your body would have to adjust for with making a lot of insulin and stuff like that uh, because water uh, soluble fibers swell up they can uh, cause you to feel fuller and so it will and you can tell that they swell up because of oats you know if you cook oatmeal you can tell it swells up and so but and so it'll make you feel full or if you eat something that's high water soluble it will absorb water in your stomach and make you feel really full um, you can bind to dietary cholesterol we talked about that and reduce risk of heart disease by binding on to dietary cholesterol so very beneficial for heart disease now, water insoluble, uh, diverticulosis is an outpouching of your intestines, and so it can uh, help you to uh, keep the, your, the waste product flowing so you d don't develop these pockets and kind of weak spots in the intestines. Now, if you do have diverticulosis, they would ask you to go on a low fiber diet until the infection goes down, and then because uh, the possibility you could get fibers, you know. Um, embedded into that pouch and so um, but they would gradually increase that but to reduce the risk of getting them then you need to have high soluble or insoluble fibers soften stools so it makes you more regular uh, and uh, makes the stool softer so you reduces constipation and that kind of thing but also reduces the risk of colon cancer uh, and other possible cancers of the intestinal tract so we'll talk more about this when we get into the cancer section and we'll talk about promoters and where water insoluble fiber is actually an anti-promoter so when we get into the cancer section but I would like you to know uh, what foods are high in water insoluble and soluble food and what foods are high in these fibers and what their health benefits are uh, for exam purposes so anyway, these are the highlights of carbohydrates and their uh, health benefits. So uh, hopefully you will uh, take these and use them in your purchasing of food products because, again, plants are very important and you can only get fibers from plant products.